All right, let's talk about your social media mix. Uh, this is how you are going to combine your social medias to offer a more broad message. Um, you really want to think strategically. You want to think about the purpose of the platform and you want to think about what you want to accomplish. Uh, I'm sure there's certain brands that, for instance, don't have a whole lot of use for Twitter. If you're a famous painter, maybe you have something to say, but you might be extremely introverted and Twitter is just not really going to be something that really takes off for you. Or if you're a journalist, Instagram is probably not the best thing for you. Uh, if you're a spoken word person, uh, and most, it, most people have a social media one outlet that they prefer over all others. So it is fair to have a, to have a, a voice, a central uh, theme, uh, a, a hero social network that you cling to the most. Uh, most athletes either like Twitter or Instagram. Uh, I think if you're a public figure, I think the temptation should be to almost stay away from Twitter altogether. I mean, it is amazing how many careers already that platform has ruined. And a lot of times because of their own doing, they decided to say something nasty or they decided uh, to uh, do something in their past that now people could come back and speak about on Twitter and get them, uh, make them another casualty of the cancel culture. But uh, Twitter is also a valuable tool. So the point of it is, is that you want to have the right message to the right audience. And so you need to understand what your message is, of course. And then you want to align your social, uh, your social media mix with your buying stages. So maybe uh, Twitter is a good way to initially pique people's interest, but once they're deeply invested in the brand, maybe Instagram is a better way to roll out new products. Uh, look at our new shoe. You already like us a lot. Um, integrated media uh, work harder. You know, well, first off, you want to keep a consistent message across your social media. I mean, that just can't be said enough. The same colors, the same voice, you want to have the same main slogans, maybe different pictures. That's a little bit more interesting. But um, it just looks better. It looks more professional when I find somebody on Facebook and then I go, well, I wonder if they have a podcast or I wonder if they have a uh, a Twitter account too, or I wonder if they have an Instagram. Oh wait, they have all of these, and they've been doing a good job of managing it and rolling it out. Well, I think this is obviously a serious enterprise. Maybe I should take them a little bit more seriously. And then, you know, fine-tuning your mix. Uh, you know, having specific content for each one that really, really connects with uh, that specific type of audience. But, you know, at the same time, come, brings it back to the cent uh, central core message. So there's some rules to it. Um, rule one is if none of your traffic are coming from mobile, it's time to shake things up. In other words, if none of your traffic is coming from one direction that you've been sort of looking at, it's time to th rethink how you're approaching that direction. So when you say it that way, maybe, you know, all social media platforms have something to offer you. So if you're not getting any uh, traffic from Twitter, maybe it's time to change your approach to Twitter. Uh, rule two is if, if you're not using your first party data, you're most likely not using the best channels available to you. So your followers are going to say things to you. You can ask them questions. Hey, what do you think of this? And they will tell you. And you know, if you have a million followers and you post a meme that is a question at the middle of it, you'll get a thousand answers. It's amazing how much money you can save off doing paid surveys by developing a community that can answer these questions for you of already interested, correctly positioned kind of followers. Uh, the rule three is to spy on your competition. You can know what your competition is doing on social media. Now they can know what you're doing too. So maybe it's a good idea to go through once in a while and figure out who they are and then block them. But you can look at what your competition is doing. You can, you can see what their new products are, what events they're participating in, in what is their messaging, uh, how are they employing their you know, uh, communication, 
uh, you can identify their strengths this way and their weaknesses. Maybe you realize that they're not actually responding to comments at all. It's like, well, that's, that's an advantage that we can have. Uh, or one thing you can do, and I just thought of this, is you can go through your competitors' Instagrams, for instance, and you can like and comment on the pages of all of their followers if they don't already follow you. A lot of times they will follow both. But uh, for instance, if I'm a uh, shoe company, maybe I'll go to my competitor's shoe company, find all their followers, and go through and do organic outreach to Instagram by liking their photos, commenting on their photos, uh, liking their page, and maybe they still won't choose to follow you. They'll kind of recognize what you're doing, but they will uh, have an opportunity. You know, the, uh, the, uh, the impression will be made. Uh, rule four, <coughs> don't throw money after every shiny new, new channel. Maybe TikTok is just coming out and you think to yourself, well, oh, I'd like to really get on top of that. But you haven't necessarily decided your messaging yet. You haven't decided what is the purpose of TikTok or you don't understand it. Uh, you don't understand the community. Um, so just jumping into it without a clear brand message, it could be okay. You know, I'm not saying it's a terrible idea. But before you jump into a new network or a new channel, really think it through. Really think it through about how it uh, can participate in the consistency and the mix that you already have. It's like bringing a new animal into a house full of, of animals. They have the, the group has to accept the new one. It's sort of the same thing. Um, rule number five, make sure you really know what each channel offers. So, you know, get to know the personality of that channel. Um, you know, communication campaigns, stories, uh, news feed. Uh, what are the rules to getting to the top of a news feed? How do you become optimized? Uh, your publication strategy. Well, there is nothing wrong with posting more. Posting more, po posting too much is better than posting too little. Because a lot of social medias won't just put everything you post at the top. A lot of it will get bottomed, so very few people will see it. But occasionally one of them will gain some, the proper kinds of attention, and will go right to the top. So you need to post 10 times in order to get one of them in a really good position. And there's nothing wrong with staying in their ear. They chose to follow you. They're obviously already interested. And you know, um, make sure that you structure your proposals from time to time uh, with a sense that you're, you know, you're actually trying to generate a coalition of interest. Uh, you know, and there's, a, there's an expression uh, from some social media leaders that's this idea that jab, jab, right hook. So, you know, maybe that post you put about, hey, come buy our product is, is your least popular post that you posted in a long time. And you've been posting all these other popular ones, but that right hook needs to happen because it's a lot more direct. It's, it's indirect, indirect, very direct promotion. Value, value, self-serving, you see. Uh, if Facebook were to shut down their business pages tomorrow, you still need a website. So just because you uh, have a nice social media mix, having a website gives you uh, uh, much more credibility than anything else. Uh, there's a certain type of credibility that a website offers you uh, that a social media page never could. Uh, I was looking for uh, construction workers in Michigan and I found uh, several guys who had just set up pages on Facebook. Yes, their phone number was there, which is good. If their phone number's not there, I'm not sending them messages to a like page. But their phone number was there, and they had some photos, and I could see the work that they did. But one guy over here, B&G Construction, had a website, had the social media, and they also had an Instagram. So they had, I mean, they had Facebook and Instagram. So I was able to look at all three of these platforms. I was able to see unique photos on each one. There was the consistent name. There was a, there was a phone number on each one. And it just caused me to realize this guy takes a, serious, a business much more seriously. And it said something about his sophistication. You just assume that this is a little bit smarter of a person. 
He was smart enough to know the value of having a social media mix instead of just the easiest of all pages, which is a Facebook like page. And he was sophisticated because he had some Instagram. And the website is, it's easy to set up, but it's also a little bit more tricky because you've got to link your domain, you've got to buy your domain separately. Uh, a lot of guys don't know how to use WordPress or anything like this. And it, this was a professionally put together website. So you could see that this guy took some pride in his presentation and it made the difference. And um, it turns out his business was a little bit more expensive. Uh, I, as the customer, had to pay for that work that he had done on social media and for his image. But it was worth it because, as I expected, it was good quality work. So uh, understanding the purpose of the platform, uh, does this objective correspond with the needs of your business? Uh, I still think it's a good idea to, to try to address every platform if you can, but you know, there's going to be your central one, your best central one. Uh, what audience does the platform target? You know, teenagers, adults, professionals, LinkedIn targets professionals only. So, um, How much time is necessary investing in social media in order to obtain the best impact? Well. If you prepare your content over the course of a couple days in the beginning of your year cycle, it doesn't take that much time at all. You can schedule posts for an entire month and then just not come back. However, I would suggest coming back because you want to also communicate. You want to demonstrate that you're looking at people's posts. If you have somebody who posts often on your social media, it's nice to answer them once in a while. Show them that you like their post. You know, show them that you're a real breathing person behind all of this content. But the biggest time sap of all is going to be gearing up day after day to create new content. Don't do it that way. Um, how would you stand out in the market? The answer is simple with creative campaigns. So um, you can media buy, you can advertise, it costs money. But I mean, it is the most focused advertising that there is. And you probably want to focus on advertising on your champion social network first and then test you know, your other less used ones, see how it works out. Maybe you'll realize there was a different social network that uh, generated a more perfect response. Your advertising resonated much more with the Facebook community than the Instagram. You, would, you wouldn't know it until you tried it. Uh, you know, media buying is acting upon your planning and buying a, you know, some space for your ads on different media mix platforms like, you know, there's the traditional networks too. There's TV, there's radio, there's, there's print media. Uh, those still have value and they're still priced for the value that they provide. In other words, the price has come down since their heyday before social media. Understand how and where social media is influencing your customer path to purchase. So, you know, how is social media um, How does it suggest a sale? Uh, Instagram has some built-in features that lead people to your website for sale. If they swipe up, they can go directly to your website. Or you can uh, post your website in the description of a post or in the description of your page. Uh, and you, know, you can suggest sales and suggest promotions through memes. Uh, you know, and it will allow you to understand your audience's social behavior and motivations. They will tell you, but then you'll also see what they like and what they don't like. You know, uh, that response, while most people just look past it, some people feel enough to click like, and you'll at least know that. Um, define your social media channel strategy. So, you know, each, each channel has its own strategy. Uh, define it, write it down. What is my strategy for this network? Maybe it's uh, you know get as much attention as possible. Maybe it's drive sales. Maybe it's uh, you know find new customers. These are all have a little bit different attitude and a little bit different uh, way of uh, structuring the offering. Um, using social media alongside other media, as I said, search and email. Uh, search engine optimization is a great choice. Um, it's sort of setting up your website and more or less it's with Google. You can advertise on Google, but you can also uh, gear up your page so that it shows up at the top of results. And that happens over time. 
And in this day and age, I highly recommend you use a professional for this. And then you can do email campaigns too, uh, which some people think is the, is the attitude of right now. I'm not sure. Uh, most promotional emails go directly to spam. But when people come to your website, you want to try to farm their, uh, their email address so you can do a email campaign to them. There is some sales to be made through this. Uh, so there's a checklist. One, understand how and where social media is influencing your customer path to purchase. So gain understanding. Understand your audience's social behaviors and motivations. Uh, define the social media channel strategy. And uh, plan social media alongside other activities. Uh, Socially led campaigns are most effective when combined with other channels. For instance, um, social and TV, social and search, social and email. You know, optimize creative, uh, which, you know, creative content should be adapted for social media channels to account for the differences in media uh, consumption behavior. Um, so it's not just about what you want to say, it's about the behavior of the community. Uh, look for a balance between scale and precision. I still think scale is the one. You, know, you want to be precise in your posts. You want to have a purpose with each one of your posts. But that takes about two seconds to recognize. But the, the scale is how you really get attention. Uh, are you playing roulette with your marketing dollars? You know, you want to be precise, especially when you're paying for advertising. Um, don't attempt to be everywhere. You want your champion channel. Uh, others will attempt to solve the problem by throwing money at it, and that's usually ineffective. So, you know, just think about how you want to mix it up. Good luck. <laughs>